I'm going to show you how to do a backwards entry, and it looks a little something like this. Welcome back to another tutorial video, I'm Ben and I've been drifting my 240SX for a long time. I also drift in the simulator as you can see and today we are at Behoku Highland Circuit in the WDT Street S13 so that I can show you how to do backwards entries. Behoku is a map that I have really been enjoying lately. It's a real life circuit complex in Japan over in the Kansai area and I'd actually love to drive there in person at some point, maybe when I make my next trip over to Japan. This turn right here is where we're gonna be able to do our backwards entry practice. And that's about as backwards as it gets. So let's talk about backwards entries. If you've seen my previous drifting tutorials, then you'll know that I consider there to be three phases of a drift. You've got your initiation phase, where you throw the car into a spin. You've got the catch phase, where you prevent it from actually spinning out. And you'll be able to see that very clearly um, especially with these backwards entries where you'll see the scenery going by the cockpit as the car is gaining angle and then if I catch it successfully that will slow down and stop and if you do nothing it'll actually unwind and go back to facing dead ahead so at the moment that it slows down and stops that's where you're going to move on to phase three which is maintaining the drift normally you can do all kinds of drift entries you can do e-brake pulls you can do clutch kicks you can do little faint moves and throw the car around but uh, and there's multiple ways to do it, but the way that I'm going to show you for doing backwards entries is entirely based around weight shift. You don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel. Uh, all you have to do is steer time correctly and give it a clutch kick at the end. So, we're in second gear. We're going to come out to the wall. Come out here, big angle. Steering pretty hard. And if you see what happened there, the car went past 90 and then it came back. And one of two things will happen if you do this correctly. The car will either come back and come to a stop, which is what happened in my case, or if you're going even faster, it will stop picking up angle, but before it comes back, it will just hit the outside wall or go off the concrete and onto the grass, depending on the map that you're using. Uh, in this case, we would hit some foam blocks that are not very soft uh, because of Assetto's collision system, which is non-existent. So I'll break it down a little bit more simply. We're gonna start with our initiation. You don't have to start drifting from back here if you're not able to, but you need to be able to do a manji entry like this, okay? So that's the first thing. This entry is also called a feint or a flick entry, but let's not get hung up on the details. Now, if you don't wanna do the wall ride, you can just do a clutch kick here and come out and do the same thing. A quick diagnostic tip, if you are finding that the car is not getting enough angle, it's probably because you're not at enough angle when you manji. So if you're at kind of shallow angle like this, it's gonna be harder to get the car to go sideways. See, we basically went to 90 degrees. We never went past 90. Perfectly good entry, but it was definitely not a backwards entry. To fix that, you'll wanna remember one of the things I talk about in all of my drifting tutorials, which is that the more angle you have before you transition, most likely the more angle you're going to go to when you transition. So basically, as you're coming in this way, before we throw our transition into the corner, you're going to need to alter your line and alter your technique in a way that the car is pushing more angle. What that does is it loads up the suspension with a whole lot of, of weight transfer. It's like, if you imagine, if you pull like a rubber band or a bungee cord way over, then when you let go, it's gonna launch way farther and that's exactly what we're doing with the car as we are pulling it so far that when it transitions it launches to where the rear actually ends up in front of the front so let's go and make sure we're doing that so we're going to get pretty wide here as you can see and now we didn't have any problem getting the back past the front now you can of course go even more backwards than that but that gives you an exact an idea of your sliding scale for what's too little and what's what's enough now let's talk about what's too much. Too much is gonna look like when the car comes so far past 90 that you're not able to do anything with it. Basically, there's an amount of time that it's gonna spend past 90 before it catches itself and it starts to pull back ahead. And if it's way backwards, then you're either going to run out of track and hit the wall or go off into the dirt, 
or you're going to lose so much speed that you're basically coming to a full and complete stop and doing like a rolling burnout around the turn. And everyone has their own opinion on this, but for me personally, doing a backy where you completely stop the car and lose all your momentum is not cool, it doesn't take as much skill. What looks really good is when you carry a ton of speed, you just happen to have the car go backwards for a little bit first. So let's see if we can't throw too much angle at it. And some of this as well is gonna have to do with your counter steering if you're just a little late on your counter steer. Well, okay, you for sure know it's too much if you spin the car completely around. Spoiler alert, this is the start of how we get into 360 entries, which will be my next tutorial video, so look forward to that. But what you will find is if the car picks up too much angle, it's going to be really difficult to get it to do what you want in the next phase. See, like here, I could have saved that. We're definitely backwards, but the turn's over here, and there's not a whole lot I can do to like yank the car over that way. There's always a sliding scale here though. If you go in faster, these super crazy full backwards, like you're looking back at the guys behind you type moves can and will work. So I encourage you to experiment with that. Before we can talk about phase two, catching this drift though, we have one really important note and that is entry speed. Unlike regular drifting, the entry speed that you're going to need when you throw a backwards entry is much higher. Now for the experienced drivers, this may not be that different because you're gonna be used to trying to go in really fast and heavy on the foot brake. But if you're still sort of learning how to drift, you may find that you do something like this and you get around the track and that's all well and good, but that's gonna be way too slow to throw a backwards entry. If you try to go backwards at that slow speed, the car is just gonna stop before or like on the apex of the turn and you're not gonna be able to get on the gas. The reason for this is very simple, drag and how long you have to be off throttle. I'm sure you know, but when you're drifting, the front tires are of course facing the direction the car is traveling. So they're free rolling, no problems. The back tires, however, are scraping against the ground and that slows the car down a lot. That's why you have to use so much throttle to stay in a smooth drift and maintain a drift circle. When you do a backwards entry though, you have to wait a lot longer off throttle while the car is sliding and that kills a ton of speed. Essentially, when you throw it, the car is going to go past straight ahead, it's going to go past 90 and then it's going to slow down and then it's going to start pulling itself back out based on what you do with your counter steer. So while it's going through this section until it stops gaining angle, you basically can't get on the gas because you'll just push it the rest of the way around and it will spin out. If you go in too fast, you'll shoot off into the outside wall. If you go in too slow, the car is just going to park. Now we'll move on to phase two, catching the drift. And this is the exact same process as catching any other drift like you saw in my last tutorial video. Essentially, you're going to time your counter steer properly and let the wheel self steer through your hands. Or if you're on a Logitech wheel, you're going to give a Hercules throw to the wheel and really spin that thing around. Time all of that correctly and it's going to keep the car from spinning out completely. Unless of course you just queued up way too much weight shift. So that's your sliding scale. If you fail to pick up enough angle, you need to throw more weight at it by throwing more angle. If you are spinning around way too far, you need to do a little bit less or your counter steer is too late. If you don't let the wheel start moving in time, see uh, this video I'll drop in a card, then you are going to spin the car no matter how little weight shift you throw at it. We'll demonstrate that with the proper timing. We're gonna get the car sideways here, run out towards the wall. Same as usual, we just let off the throttle, let go of it. Now right here, we've caught the drift. And you can see that, right? It is picking up angle, it stops, and then it starts coming back. And here's an interesting note, if you actually had enough straightaway speed, you could wait and the car would come completely back to straight. You could do this on like a drag strip track if you wanted to but the car will come back. See, very tame. It's interesting how not violent it is as long as you time everything correctly such that you're not gonna hit the wall. As always, phase two, catching the drift, has to do with the front wheels and the steering. Essentially, that's because the front wheels are counteracting the rotation that the car is picking up and that's how you catch the drift. Now, there is a little something unique about this, which I'll explain. You know, normally your front wheels are free rolling and they're not being drug across the ground at all. So they're facing dead ahead, the direction that the car is like actually sliding. And so imagine that this is your tires and this is the body of your car 
your counter steering as you drive the car around turns, but the front tires are always facing the same way. When you do a backwards entry, however, you actually move past where the tires can, can steer to. So then you hit a point where you go backwards and the front tires as well as the rears are actually being drug across the ground. The reason that the car is able to go backwards and then pull itself back forwards is really interesting though. And it's essentially that the front tires are far closer to being facing straight than they are to be being facing backwards. The rear tires are close to perpendicular to the direction the car is traveling across the road. So it works a lot like pulling the e-brake normally, strangely, even though the whole car is, is sideways. What is gonna happen is the front will still fight against the rear. The rear is gonna make more drag. The front will be doing more coasting than it is dragging and that causes it to fight to pull the car in this direction. So then all that you have to do is allow it to pull the car back out until you're about 90 degrees and that's when you're clear to get back onto the throttle. So essentially when the car stops picking up angle, uh, if you can see the apex and you're past it, you can get on angle here. If not, you can wait a little bit and then push it back around. Now let's go put it into practice. Run out towards the wall, run up here. We're past 90, we're gonna wait, we're gonna clutch kick out. We waited for the front tires to gain traction and start pulling the nose of the car back out and preventing the spin out that otherwise would have happened. And then we got back onto throttle. Now you do have to get back onto throttle with a clutch kick. I'll demonstrate real quick. You cannot just roll into throttle, at least with a WDT street car. If you had something that was V8 or, or turbo V8, you might could, but if you just get on throttle, literally nothing happens. That was full throttle. And the reason for that is because the rear tires are almost at a full stop. When they're 90 degrees, you have lost all of your speed. This is really important. When you go past 90 degrees, you're gonna to wanna to clutch in and basically wait. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. The most convenient reason from a simulator standpoint is that you're gonna to have to clutch kick anyway, so you might as well have the clutch in. And then you can charge up your, uh, your clutch kick and do so when you get back on throttle. But the bigger reason comes from real life drifting. When the clutch is out, your wheels are directly tied to your engine. So if your engine is spinning, it's gonna make power go through the wheels. Great. But if you go past 90 degrees, which direction are your wheels gonna spin? They're gonna spin backwards a little bit. Maybe not a lot, but they're gonna be more likely to spin backwards if you're off throttle than they are to spin forwards. Uh, and it can happen that your wheels, if you go backwards enough, will actually spin through the drivetrain. They'll spin your engine backwards while it is running. It may not damage the engine horribly one time, but uh, it's something to be aware of. And so clutching in prevents that from being a risk. And it also sets you up for being able to do that clutch kick out. So especially if you're gonna apply this technique to real life, clutch in by the time that you hit past 90 degrees. It's also a handy uh, skill that you'll wanna have for when we talk about how to learn 360 entries. Now we're ready to put it all together by introducing phase three, where we clutch kick out and maintain this drift. And uh, essentially, here's what it's gonna look like. This is mostly review material, but you're gonna come in, ride the wall if you care to, do your big transition, wait, and then clutch kick out. So you're gonna be really patient. You're gonna wait as the car goes past 90. You're going to wait as the car stops picking up angle. And then depending on where you are on the track, you can either immediately get back on throttle the moment that the car stops picking up angle, or you can, if you wanna be a little bit more careful, you can wait until the car's back to 90 degrees and then clutch kick out. If you came up really short on the turn and the apex is still in front of you, you may just have to bail. And if you need to bail, it's actually really safe. You just don't do any uh, anything to maintain the drift, keep your steering, and you know how I showed you, it'll come back out to straight ahead. Just let it come back out. Most likely you won't clip the inside wall or anything like that. If you clutch too soon or too hard, you need to be pretty careful with this clutch work. It's kind of weird. If you clutch too soon, you'll spin the car out the rest of the way. Even if you clutch kick at the right time, the same thing will happen if you clutch kick too hard. So normally when you're throwing a clutch kick, it's pretty much just like, give it hell, give it a really strong weight shift. But this is a case where the car, you're already at 90 degrees. Like you're basically at the maximum amount of angle that your car can hold on throttle. So you're not gonna need to give it as much. If you wait too late, the other thing will happen. 
So basically, if you wait too late, you're going to find that the car has come back too far and it's just really difficult to get it to stay in drift. You may also at that point hit the wall depending on where you're at. So let's wait too late. See, that almost makes a transition where the car A struggles to continue around the turn and stay in drift, but B, think about my uh, other drifting tutorials and, you know, think about how like changing direction works. Well, you've got a ton of steering angle and you let off throttle. If you wait too long, that'll happen. All that's left to do now that you understand the basics are get some practice so that you can begin to home in on the correct amounts and timing of all of your inputs. So we'll do a few more laps. We'll come out, we'll ride the wall, we'll cue up some big angle. That was almost a little bit too late there. So in that case, I would have wanted to initiate all of that a little bit sooner. I was watching the outside wall approach rather quickly there. And we'll just do some full laps of the track as well. This is such a fun place. Excellent tandem map. If you can handle these couple of really like tight deceleration zones, slowing down while in drift is counterintuitive to the beginner because normally it's all about applying throttle to keep the car sideways. And it's just weird, especially if you're into low power cars, to end up in a situation where you need to slow down and drift. See, there we go. Did everything a little bit earlier. The other option would have been to use a little bit less entry speed. Either one of those works great. And we'll run out to the tires. Feeling that we're on the rumble strips there. A handy tip for uh, those couple of hairpins are that you can pull e-brake to control the car's angle and then use foot brake to control the car's speed. But that'll be for another tutorial. Oh, there's what happens. It happened. If you get on your power with your clutch kick and your clutch kick is too strong, it will send the car around the rest of the way. Uh, and of course, nobody's perfect. One of the things that I really struggle with in sim drifting is clutch kicks not being able to feel the weight shift of the car. I've gotten pretty okay at getting my transitions correct, but when I need to do clutch kicks sometimes in tandem or for 360 entries, I sometimes use way more power than is actually needed. Uh, and for me, it's because I rely on feeling that weight shift to actually control the car. And if I, uh, if I can't, it's just a little difficult. You know, it's kind of like throwing a dart with one eye shut. You just don't quite have the, the depth perception that you're used to. I'm dealing with a similar phenomenon for my uh, clutch kicks, where if it's a clutch kick that takes some finesse, like when you're doing a backwards entry, or when you're coming off of a 360 entry, certain ones in tandem when you're chasing, it can just be a little difficult. But that gives you an idea of the gist and if you are struggling with that clutch kick piece i will tell you what i do real quick so i do a full strength clutch kick but as soon as the clutch is out i lift up on the throttle as i get the tires spinning so that i make sure we don't bog the motor and then i allow them to slow down before i then sustain it so it's almost like the way that i do it to like catch and maintain so you've got the first one where the car is big sideways you just let it come back and you catch and maintain here but essentially I'm doing like another clutch kick initiation here, which I then catch and maintain again to exit the turn. Um, hopefully that's not too complicated. That's just the way that I do it. And of course you'll be able, once you get more experience and practice, to come up with your own version and your own style for how to do these. So if you guys have any different tips or tricks, drop them down in the comment section so that everybody can read them and learn from them. Don't forget that uh, I live stream every Friday on twitch.tv slash Trick. I would love to see you there. We have a Discord community that is just full of real and sim drifters who uh, would be happy to hang out with you as well. That's also down in the video description. And if you want to see more tutorials, check out the videos on screen right now or subscribe and we will see you again because the next tutorial coming up will build upon this one and it's how to do a 360 entry. Have a good night guys. Peace.